story I like to tell about a situation. Got How's it going, everybody? This is Dan, and this is Stories with Dan, episode 11. And I'm back again with another episode. Today, as you can tell from the title, we're talking about a movie that I would like to review or just give my opinion on. It didn't come out too recently. I mean, kind of. It's been two years. 2017 is when it came out. The movie Hostiles. Now, just a little quick, I don't know, introduction to what this topic is, I guess, is now, um, when this movie was coming out, the trailer looked amazing. Uh, the reviews, whoever can view it before it comes in theaters, they all said it was great. Literally in the trailer, it said best Western since, um, one of like Clint Eastwood and Morgan Freeman's Westerns, which I don't even know if that one was actually good, but pretty much claiming is one of the best Westerns of all time. Pretty much. Um, well, maybe not all time, but they're saying it was pretty, they compared it to a Clint Eastwood Western, which those are all great. Um, if you like Westerns, you may not like Westerns. Um, they are long they are kind of boring, but, um, there's always something at the end or the story is this good. There's always something that makes it a good story. Um, but for this one, for hostiles, I got to say, it was the complete opposite. Um, I went to this movie excited because, you know, they don't make Westerns that much anymore. It was kind of a genre that happened, um, you know, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. After that, it kind of died. There wasn't many in the 90s, maybe a few here and there. Um, and even today, there is only a handful of, um, you know, Westerns that are coming out in the modern day. And none of them have been that good. And this one, I'm going to say, is the worst Western that has come out in the 2000s by far. Now, I have seen The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, A Few Dollars More, A Fistful of Dollars, uh, Outlaw Jonesy Wales, or whatever I think it's called. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, God, I'm totally free. There's another one where Clint Eastwood is, uh, he's kind of... Um, Sorry, I'm going to look it up right now. It's because I don't want to. Um, damn, I'm forgetting. What the hell's is that? Um, some of these I haven't even seen, guys. Some of them I have not seen. Um, anyways, I'm just trying to figure out what this one was called. Uh, God damn. Oh, High Plains Drifter. Amazing movie. That's one you should definitely go see. High Plains Drifter. One of the best. Um, but like I said, I've seen like Pale Rider, Fistful of Dollars, Good, the Bad, the Ugly. I've seen all these great Westerns and they are definitely cult classics and they are long and they aren't like the most thrilling the whole way through, but you got to give it up to them. It was a different time period. You know, people didn't have ADD. There wasn't crazy CGI. There wasn't, you know, this was entertainment. So having a long film was more acceptable than it is nowadays. Nowadays, you got to have like a 90 minute film. If you got a two-hour film, it better be something that's big and uh, gonna do really well, and everyone's gonna want shit. Everyone's gonna want to see, uh, sort of like all those Affinity Wards and all those superhero movies. Everyone goes and sees those. Um, anyways, so what I'd like to look at is just to pretty much talk about this movie. Now, this movie was hyped up crazy. Um, and I'm gonna give it some probably the best trailer. I have seen for a Western best trailer, everything in the trailer. That's probably as exciting as it will get. Once you get to the actual movie, there's one exciting scene and it is over after that It is done. There's nothing else going on. So real quick, uh, Metra critic, 65% Rotten Tomatoes, 71%. Um, I believe the 65 is pretty, pretty doable. And 71%, that's a little too much to be given this movie, honestly, in my mind. It's two hours and 14 minutes, so it's a long movie. you got to sit through it. Now, I went and saw this movie pretty close to when it first came out. Uh, like, it was still in theaters when I saw it. It was only a few days out into the theaters. Now, I went there, and I went by myself, like a loner. But I was like, you know, I just want to still see this movie. And I don't want to, like hit up someone and see if they want to go. If they don't want to go, I just was like, I'm just going to go. It's the middle of the day. I'm not doing anything. Let's go. Brought my little wax pen with me, you know, so I can get a little high when I'm uh, sitting in the theater. I snuck it in, obviously. 
you got to ghost it. You can't be blowing smoke in the theater. You'll get caught. But, you know, it's the middle of the day, barely anyone there. I sat in the very back row and, you know, I sat down. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to watch this movie. I'm probably going to love it. I literally went in thinking I'm going to love it, which is a bad thing to do. Kind of. It depends. But now this movie starts out amazing. One of the, like it, you're, you, this movie starts out and they literally use like all their good content or just like whoever was writing it in the beginning. I don't know what happened, but the only good part of this is the intro. I swear to God, only good part, the only part with actual, um, I'd say like just thrilling actual action that you like are actually interested in. So it opens up, it's this little house. Obviously, frontiers, they're the only ones around. They're down in this little valley, a bunch of mountains around them, big grassy area. You know, dad's outside chopping wood. Mom's teaching the kids how to read and all that. And it's like, oh, wow, what a, you know, what a lovely family. What a great thing. You know, dad comes in, they're eating some lunch. And all of a sudden, you know, three, four, five Indians are outside the house, standing in the field on their horses, staring in. One of them's face painted completely red oh spoils spoilers by the way um this is a terrible movie so i gotta go watch it but one of his faces is painted completely red and you're like oh man there's the fucking bad guy of the movie here he is his first appearance we're gonna learn everything about him here in the this intro right now so you know dad goes out there tries to talk things over boom he gets an arrow to the, the head or something crazy like that then the red face indian goes up and just scalps his head off and you're like holy crap this movie is going to be the best Western I've ever seen. They were not lying in that trailer. Anyways, then the mom, the girls, all they can do at that point is start to run. I'm pretty sure uh, the lady started firing a shotgun on them, kind of broke it up. And then they all start running. They're running, running. You know, she's trying to get the kids to come along with her. One of the kids is falling back a little bit. Boom. This kid just gets struck with an arrow flat to its face gone that kid just got wasted in the first like three minutes of this movie you're like i was just learning watching that kid learn how to read and now he, she's dead and you're like holy shit you know you couldn't believe you're like damn this movie is just starting off great and they keep running they keep running the other girl she gets hit by a few arrows and she's limping and then the other daughter dies and you're like whoa this whole family is just about to get roasted and then um so then this lady runs runs gets up into the forest near their house kind of makes some distance gets in a little hiding spot and then uh like i don't remember if she ran off entirely i think they like walk past her and then she runs off in a different direction excuse me she runs off in a different direction and but yeah then you just get this close-up shot of like the fully red painted painted face indian like walking through um you know like just walking through the forest, a little quick glance of him, like real close up, and then it cuts to the next scene. And from that point on, I was like, holy crap, this is going to be great. I can't wait to see like what the final battle between like this red faced dude and the main character who's played by Christian Bale, um, Army Captain Joseph Blocker in the movie. What a retarded name. I didn't even know that was his name. Anyway, so then it cuts to this uh, fort in the desert. Um, so it's kind of like Civil War-ish time. So, you know, uh, Christian Bale's wearing all blue uniforms. He's the captain of this uh, fort. They have some Indian prisoners. Um, and, you know, what I like, the only thing I could say that's good about this movie is that they didn't have any political commentary, no political correctness in it. Or they did have some political commentary, but just the political correctness was not as bad as some movies are today where it's like all one sided to like, look how bad this one group was to this group. And they are the only ones who ever did anything bad to this group. This group was so innocent. Um, and that's where it's like, um, obviously us coming to this country a long, long time ago and devastating the Indian population. It's pretty fucked up, uh, massacring a lot of these tribes and their way of life and their culture. And I'm sure, there, you know, there's plenty of good ones to them, but there also was bad ones. Like I just explained in the beginning of this story with the opening scene of this family getting butchered by these Indians who are just out for blood and out for scalping and all that. And then when they get to this fort, like I'm talking about, yeah, you see the soldiers kind of abusing an Indian prisoner and just like beat him up and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I like how they're even sided with it, kind of saying like, hey guys, yeah, 
we did a lot of bad things to the Indians, but they also did a lot of bad things to other people, which kind of, I guess, doesn't make it right, but it just, you know, I like how it was even. You know, it wasn't like they were just abusing the Indians for no reason, and it's not like our guys were super generous and nice guys also, like trying to make us look good. So I like that. That's what I like. Anyways, so pretty much this captain gets a letter from somebody. He shows up, like, you need to escort these Indians uh, to, you know, this new location or whatever. And also at this point, like the blonde haired lady in the beginning who ran away and her kid and her father or her husband all died. She eventually ends up there too, shows up, blah, blah, blah. And I only saw this once because it's such a bad movie. I didn't see it again. So I may be forgetting things. But anyways, they're told you got to go on this journey um, and bring these Indians to this location and all that. And it's like, and you got to bring this chief, uh, this one chief of an Indian tribe with you. He's like the most important guy and like no one's going to go unless he goes. So pretty much they start on this journey and it's like, all right, here we go. Here comes the kind of boring parts of the Western, you know, them starting off the travels, going through the desert, the big landscape shots, uh, making a campfire, kind of exchanging history between each other, character building, all that kind of stuff that you would see in a movie. Like, all right, here we go. We're going into the semi boring stuff, whatever. But it doesn't. That continues for the two hours and 14 minutes that this movie is. Um, and it is, it's brutal. It is honestly brutal. So, you know, it's walking, walking. And then there's these, like, kids uh, that are part of the Indian tribe that are kind of, like, with this one lady and then the chief. And, you know, obviously, like, in the end, the white lady in the beginning, like, adopts these two Indian kids. And they're, like, hers now. And she takes care of them. Like, that's kind of where the story goes that way. But so you think, okay, like um, at one point they're walking and you see the dude with the red face, the Indian with the red face, you know, the bad Indians are like, oh shit, there they are just kind of on top of the hill staring over at the good guys that are, you know, who we're supposed to be rooting for. Like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen between them. There's their first contact. And of course the chief, the Indian chief that he's transporting, oh, he knows these guys. He knows who they are. He knows how bad they are, blah, 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 you know. He's not on their sides at all, really, of like how their culture is, but he knows who they are. So with that, um, there's kind of like um, him and Christian Bale are always kind of like butting heads a little bit in the movie where it's like, no, blah, 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 this, no, blah, 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 that. And so at this one point, anyways, they all like go to sleep on this campfire, right? And the next morning they wake up and I don't remember if the chief wasn't there or if he was there, but... Um, Christian Bale kind of gets mad at him for like disappearing and then he reappears and all that. And then they finally, they continue on their journey. And what do you get to see as they're walking along to the left of them at a certain point in the movie after a few like compilation type shots, there's the Indians, the guy with the red face, all the bad guys you saw in the beginning, they're all hung in the tree. You didn't get to see how they died. You didn't get to get that satisfaction of like, yeah, that's what you got for killing all those people. They're just in the tree and the chief had snuck off in the middle of night and murdered them all. This guy is supposed to be all peaceful. He went and just murked all these Indians um, because he knew that they would just harm them no matter what. They don't care who you are. They're going to kill you. So I thought that was lame. It's like, dude, you built this all up in the beginning. These super bad Indian guys that are going to come and that's going to be, you know, the antagonist in the movie. And they're going to fuck up this trip trying to get these other Native Americans to a different place or wherever they're going. And yeah, so it's like, yeah, it's just, it was dumb. They had their... You don't get to see him die. And it's like, what was the point of the whole opening shot at that point? You're like, this is so stupid. Anyways, and they keep going on their journey. Now that's just over. And now you're back to just more walking, more hiking. And then eventually, um, you know, a few other people die here and there. They're running low on people. They're losing horses, what have you. I don't know. It just, it goes on for way, way too long. Um, so eventually they get they're pretty much at where they need to be. They need, and, um, it's like the chief, a few other, uh, the chief Christian Bale, the main woman, uh, this Indian lady. And then the two kids who are native Americans or whatever, like the two native American kids that are with them. So the one, so pretty much they're on like, they're on some land. One Christian Bale's like a captain of the American army. And these three dudes ride up, and the one dude is the like the guy from uh, The Walking Dead, the old farmer guy in season two, who like doesn't let anyone on their farm and like locks all the t- zombies in the barn and stuff. So yeah, him, 
he's like one of the main guys. I don't know who the two other guys were. I'm sure they're like just extra type people, not really anyone who's known. Um, and they're like, what are you doing on our land? And they're like, huh? And it's like, yeah, you can't, you know, this whole like, t- like this is my land. This is my ranch. What are you doing on it? You got to pay a fee or all this stuff. And then he's like threatening to kill them. And then there's like this quick shootout where Christian Bale just like murks them all like real fast. It's really no suspense, no drama, no anything. And you don't even know who these guys are. You just met them two minutes ago and now they're already dead. So it's like, okay, like I had no connection to them. I had no reason to hate them. This is just this man's land. And he was trying to, to like wonder what you're doing on it. And yeah, after that, I'm pretty sure like the chief dies at some point, like all the two, the chief and the Indian lady, they both get killed off at that scene somehow. And then, uh, you know, Christian Bale goes fucking ballistic on the, the guys that had walked up. I'm, I kind of remember him just going crazy. Um, but yeah, and then, and then pretty much they go on the rest of their trip. They get to this train station and that's where Christian Bale was supposed to drop them off. And obviously he's kind of had this connection with the woman. The woman's taking these two native kids with her. And she's like, you can come with us, Christian Bale. You can come. You don't have to go back to, you know, being a soldier, blah, 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 blah. And he's just like, no, I can't go. I can't go. I can't go with you on this train and live with you and those two kids and, you know, be your husband or whatever she's expecting, which is like, lady, like your husband just got fucking killed. Your two children were slayed by arrows and you're already moving on to this guy after going on a two hour fucking hike through the fucking desert. Retarded. Anyways. Um, yeah. And then he pretty much, uh, just, it's like, then it's kind of, it's like they, the train starts, it's going off. You see Christian Bale standing there and he's in his like black suit, bowler hat, you know, the typical, like what you'd think of that time period if you're in like Chicago or something. Or just the bowler hat, like, black suit. Like, I don't know how to explain it. In 1892. Just think about it. And then, um, and then all of a sudden there's, like, a big steamy mist. And you see him, like, he steps onto the back of the very last second. Steps on the caboose of the train as it's pulling away. And just kind of stands there as it slowly goes away. Smoke kind of fills the screen. And then it fades to black. And it's over. And you're like, what did I just watch? I literally watched an amazing opening scene with... Great uh, suspense, uh, drama, and something you think is going to build up into something even crazier at the end. And then after that, it's just walking. You see those guys die, but you don't get to see them die. You just see them hanging in a tree. Then you run into these random ranchers, and then they die within three minutes. And then the movie comes to an end. And it's just like, okay, you said this was the best Western since whatever. It's like, uh, it just, it was a terrible movie. And I don't recommend anyone watching it. Go watch an old Western when Westerns were still getting made. And you know what? They don't need to make any more Westerns because they're just ruining them. No more Westerns. All right? I don't want a modern Western anymore. I thought about it. When I saw this movie coming out, I was super psyched. And when I saw it, then I was very disappointed. So don't go waste two hours and 14 minutes on this movie. I know it came out in 2017. It's not new. And you've probably no one has probably even thought about this fucking movie since then. But like... Yeah, it it was bad. All right, guys, that was my review on Hostiles with what's his name? We got Christian Bale, Rose, Rosamund Pike, and Wes Studi, and it's just like it was just a terrible movie. There was nothing. You weren't attached to any of the characters, and it just went nowhere. So don't go watch it, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed this review kind of a rant on the movie from like a movie two years ago but you know that's just how it goes but um yeah you know thanks for listening guys this has been another episode of stories with dan episode 11 uh we just reviewed hostiles the western movie that's supposed to be the all-time greatest western uh ever according to the trailer i mean go watch the trailer the trailer is amazing and then that's all you got to see that's all the action put together in a cool cinematography way and that's it But yeah, like I said, thanks for watching, guys. Episode 11, Stories with Dan. And I'll see you next time. Later.